Do you have your uh, printer by you there or no? Yeah, yeah, it's here. You want to point your camera to it? Let me, um, let me move this around. I was just trying to um, um, get something going this morning, but I haven't, I haven't managed to. Uh, I don't know what happened. Really. Okay. But he just stopped doing the three point probing. And, okay. Uh, and uh, I cannot have uh, reset the firmware back to zero from the standard. And uh -huh. um, I have uh, reset the the settings in Cura, but I don't manage to, to get it to probe the three points anymore. Huh? Was it probing ever before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, uh, I probably ran uh, like Prince in the air yesterday like ten times. And, yeah. Uh, because I was trying to calibrate the the area of the of the heat effect and the uh, and the yeah, so the probe wouldn't fall out of the edge and we'll do the probing in, in the three points and one. Uh huh. And I don't know what happened. When I went to put the filament to print, stop doing the, the problem. Huh. And, uh, and the story with that is that it also now I have regulated the tip, the nozzle to be at the right distance with the three point probing. But now that it doesn't do the probing anymore, it's, um, it's staying away from the platform, from the bed. So. I see. I don't know. I am hustled. Yeah. Um, now, in all that work, have you have you gotten this to work after you turn the computer on and off, like just simple shutdown? Uh, yes, yes, I have shut down the computer a couple of times already. Uh, the machine works. Is is doing the he's doing the cube if I put the cube to print in, in Cura. Uh, but it doesn't do the the uh, the three point probing and I haven't tried putting the filament through yet. Uh-huh. Do you have any directions as far as what you can what you can try next? No. <laughs> I am I am lost at the moment. Uh -huh. um, I see. I accidentally woke up at four in the morning this morning thinking about uh, joining the meeting and then I realized that I didn't have to be up until six really and uh, I have spent an hour and a half or so trying to um, figure out what happened with those uh, that probing but I don't know. okay all right um, yeah yeah okay well let's let's start the meeting anyway and let's report on uh, maybe we'll get back to that on some of the as we get talking here as far as what we can do on that um, but yeah let, let's get going so as far as the the working team meeting notes let me just paste the link in there for everybody yeah no your printer looks really good I mean it's uh, looks quite nice in terms of uh, nice nice looking finish and there's a couple more questions I have maybe let's let's start start with that as the first topic and and to begin with so uh, we typically log the times as we are all doing we're basically starting up the year it's January 22 we're kind of starting to get the numbers back up here if you look on page let me share my screen if you look on uh, if you look on page one of the working document people are kind of waking up from the it's called January. it's this month that kind of disappears like January is after the holidays and everything it's typically somewhat slow but we're it sounds like we're picking up again uh, I'd like to request though for somebody to take notes today once again uh, can someone do that I can I can um 
I can do that. Um, okay. So you, notes on page two. So basically, <clears throat> write down the main things that we're talking about. Just something that if somebody finds this online, they could kind of get a summary from the notes. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the note taker part. Let's do that. So let's um, let's start with um, the three D printer. Just some comments on what you have done. It looks really nice. I noticed that you haven't done the cable chain like we have, and I guess that's uh, how is that working? Have you been? Um, is that satisfactory? Or are you getting tangled up ever? Uh, do you think that's what you have right now is workable? It's very workable. Yes. Uh, no issues. Uh, issues at all. Uh huh. Uh, the reason I went like this was because um, I think the cables I have for my extruder uh, for my uh, motors were uh, a bit shorter uh -huh. overall so if i were if i was to use the chain and and, uh, and took them in a 90 degree sort of trying to route them uh, uh -huh. it was going to be uh, not enough cabling yeah yeah which is i mean it uh, definitely definitely saves a lot of time as far as the official orientation though like when i look at it the official orientation was where the uh, if the z-axis is in the back, the x-axis is on the left, the motor is on the left, and the, on the y-axis, the... Yeah, so you, you kind of have it reversed. It appears that your origin as the is at the back right. For yes. us to follow the, the convention, we have back left. Now, that may be... That may be part of the issue you're facing, actually. And what I would suggest, I mean, I don't know, is that is that possible for you to change that? Because because otherwise you have to just kind of mess, go back and forth, messing with a lot of different settings. I mean, is that easy for you to fix that part where you just put it in the back left, so we don't have to worry about maintaining, you know, a lot of different versions? It's the the reason for that is that we just say, okay, this is the official setting, and therefore that's not a an issue when we go to troubleshoot anything. Because that will deter, yes. yeah, that will possibly affect that. Maybe why, I mean, potentially why the bed probing may not be working. Maybe it thinks it's at a different location and it's just saying, hey, it's not possible to move there and it just doesn't do it or something like that. So um, is that something you can do to, to replace it to, to the back left and make the... I can do that. I can do that. But I think the, the only uh, issue that... Uh, came up with this uh, inverting the motor like that, yeah. and I only only came to the realization yesterday, is that if you if you have your imaginary Cartesian coordinates on the on the bed, uh, the x axis on the on the heated bed is inverted to the other side. So my origin of coordinates is to the front right of the machine, sort of where the power supply unit is. Uh huh. Um, so that was uh, my issue at trying to find um, to set up the, the points um, for the probing initially. And um, once I realized that that was the issue, I managed to get the points where I wanted them. Uh huh. And it was probing. So the and the the, the reason why they, I put the um, the axis with the motor on the Y2 side and, and uh, is because that gave me like an extra inch of movement on the X axis. Uh. Um, so I currently have the eight inches. Uh, if I put the motor on the left hand side towards Y1, um, I get restricted on the movement. Uh huh. And that is because of the location of where the bed is, correct? Uh, that is because of the location of, I, rem I think it was the, the end stop, or, um, no, I don't remember now because this was a couple of weeks ago <laughs> that I, I came to this uh, uh, resolution. Um, uh -huh. I have also modified the end stops uh, to achieve the 8 inches. On, on both axis X and Y. 
Mm -hmm. Those modifications are basically just extensions that I, I attached with superglue. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it doesn't look great, but it's very functional. Uh -huh. um, and it could be it could be designed as a as a feature. Uh, so you you could print print that at different uh, once you have the printer going, you could really print another another end stop if you wanted to and, and modify it to your to your to suit your needs. But uh, I mean, always I, I keep in mind that we don't want to be changing and adding many things just to keep it as simple as, as um, right. Right. Um, you have the 16-inch frame, correct? This is a 16-inch frame. Yeah. Yep. Um, there are plenty of pictures in the uh, in the wiki. I, I only put that one there yep. uh, here in the slides because it's a picture I took yesterday. It's the newest, but um, I think it's pretty. Um, um, there are no pictures there in the in the in the D3D Australia wiki to to have a an idea of of, of things, of positions and stuff like that. I think. Yeah. Uh, did you document the parts like you included the files for the the different cable routing part, like the? I, I have not done that yet. I have to upload the uh, the files. Okay, okay. Please do that. As far as um, did you discuss that at all in your blog, or you didn't yes. document? Yes, I have. Um, I have logged that in the BTC Australia. Um, okay, and as far as the detail on the the end stop modification, is that did you log that as well? I I logged that as. Um, I know I didn't ver uh, did a very detailed description of what I have done, um, so I can um, I need to go back because I it was all like temporary. I didn't know whether it was going to be suitable or not at the end. Yeah, but it is working properly. Yeah, how did you do the the actual? I'm looking at the picture of your cable mounting. I mean, you designed those files in FreeCAD. Yes, I did design those files. They are the design in, in the files is a little bit untidy as uh, um, I still don't don't get the, all the, the, the idea exactly how to make everything in um, FreeCAD. But um, you see that that piece that you were looking at before had two parts. Yeah, I'm looking at, trying to see where the file is. Yeah, no, I haven't I haven't uh, loaded the file for for those two yet. Were you cheating um, and using another program package, or you did this in in FreeCAD? No, no, not FreeCAD, FreeCAD. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, no, uh, if you look at those two pieces in the corner that you were looking at before, not yeah. that one you are pointing now. Well, that is part of it, but um, I did it as a two piece to lock it in place. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, which is nice. The, yeah, but with the tolerance that is in the in the corner piece, that is inside where the cable goes in, really, I don't think that extra lock is needed. Yeah. Um, because of the way the cable sort of uh, levers uh, on that uh, round piece, yeah, I think it will lock in place just by friction. It won't move because it's very tight tolerance. Yeah. No, it looks quite professional. It's a little. Uh grabbing finger <laughs> it's pretty nice excellent um let's see i'm trying to find some of the modifications on the end stops just to just to see what you have done um can you point me to where that i can find that oh yeah so i see so let's see you're oh okay i see that is this what you're using currently yes but that picture is currently um that particular one is is um, outdated, let's say, uh -huh. because I have I have put the uh, the end stop on the opposite side to the motor, 
still attached with the same with the same uh, bracket that uh, is in the in the file list, the same yeah. end stop and bracket design. But I put an extension on the carriage on the other side opposite the extruder. Okay. Okay. Um, if you look at the other picture that was close to that one before on the uh, the D3C uh, Australia. Uh, you will see the extension on on y y a axis um, so, oh wow i can't access that picture let's see okay at the moment i cannot see what you are up to because uh, uh, your video has been turned off it says here at the moment Yeah, no, that's pretty well documented altogether. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, when, it, yeah, what you're doing there with the annotations over the pictures, which is pretty um, packed over, and then you got this mouse over text description. That text description happens to cover up that whole picture. I can take a look at that later. Um, Let's see, so do you think it would be a good idea, can you, um, let's see, do you want to just leave it as what you have as is or try to, like when you said about the modification so that you get, get the full full bed, otherwise you would have to re-drill the hole so where the bed is mounted, that's the idea? If I wanted to move the bed, yes, I have already re-drilled it once, um, and uh, to... Hmm. I don't remember now. I don't remember if I if I recorded if I logged the details of, of why um, why I finally left it there. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, the bed will probably have to be put back to the original holes. I don't think I need to drill more holes. But if I wanted to swap the the, the motor back to the to the Y one side, uh, I'll have to move the bed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and it's interesting about the cable guide, like I'm wondering if um, that's something we should actually consider, though that will change once we get the Prusa i3 extruder, so yeah, yeah, but that's good, that's a, that's a good, good solution there to make that work. Um, only thing I would suggest maybe on to get your printer really, really good is um, you have the, the one axis support. Uh, the two axis is what I would actually, I would recommend that because actually after a lot of time, it's just a thing that can, that can get bent over and over time, you, you know, if you hit it or otherwise, I mean, it, it works, but you're going to have to mess with that down the road sometime when you bump it or something what, happens. So in other words, putting, I, yeah, putting a second Z-axis would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it is a good idea. Uh, but uh, what I have noticed here with the, with the piece on the X carriage, and on the Z, Z carriage, sorry, mm -hmm. um, that short idler piece that we use to hold the, the bed rods. Yes. There is an issue, the mechanical, a mechanical, uh, the, the strength that um, is put into the uh, the piece by the nuts that hold the piece to the carriage mm -hmm. is, is because that splits the, the that little short idler piece splits it open. Uh huh. And I think that is our main issue in relation to the drooping. Uh, uh -huh. of the bed it, that the, the nuts start digging in the yeah. back of that short eyelid piece and not because it's getting hot or anything just because the plastic starts um, uh, receiving with, with time it's just it's the nat nature of the, of the material yeah um, so um, I believe that I haven't really printed anything yet because what I am more worried about is the uh, um, like jittering or going up and down of the bit as, as Z moves. 
Right. Um, but it looks pretty stable at the moment. Um, what I what I was thinking for now is I will grab two small clamps and clamp the back of the uh, of that short idler piece just to keep it closed, and that will leave the bed a couple of millimeters on the on the further further stem side or sort of the front side will come up as I, I said as I press on those two corners of the of the um, I see support. I see what you're saying yeah yeah and that problem is also eliminated when you have a two-sided support as well yeah, yeah. yeah. I just don't have uh, well I don't have any rods left over or I don't have another connector I don't have all the what I need to put a, a, a second um, Z axis in, in the machine at the moment. And, uh, okay. I'm not sure if I will have the time to to, um, to yeah. get those parts on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's pretty good. So. Um, so, so is the plan here to move the axis over to the other side? <laughs> Can, you think you can do that? Uh, the, the yeah, to make it conform with the official orientation guide, so that yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. can do that. I can do that. I will. I will. Um, I think I will lose a little bit. Um, I will have to modify the end stop again, but that's not shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Um, but I think I will definitely. Uh, it's likely that I will lose some um, some of the space on the bay. Okay, but but you can regain it by by moving the axis over, right? Um, there was a story. I don't remember what the story was. You sh I think you should be, because I, I mean I. I think um, I, I should. I, I will try it and, and let you know. How yeah. It went. But first, I would like to get it get it going. And, yeah. Uh, and I don't know this, what the story is right now with this, because I am convinced that it's something either. Uh, I thought it was a firmware, but I, I just reset the firmware to the. I, I downloaded the original version again. Yep. Uh, I'm having the same problem, so now I'm thinking it's probably something in, in Cura. Yeah. Uh, Cura, um, and but I don't understand why. And as I mentioned to you on the email, there is this um, uh, G code section yeah. where I can. I cannot see the description of the three-point probing. On the right. G-code. All you need to do to activate it is, I think it's G92 in that startup G code, and that will activate the probing, which is in the firmware. So that should be enough. Just type in G92 in the startup G code, I believe, uh, whichever the code yeah. is for for bed probing. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds good. Yeah, try to get it going and see if we can troubleshoot that. Uh, we know we can definitely add the probing with a simple G-code command. So let's see if that works. Let's move on here, but this is, that's pretty good work. Um, let's see, any other questions on this? Um, anyone else have any other questions on it? Because uh, what we can do is compare notes, because I have a machine that's exactly like this with a single bed support, and then we should compare, like, once you get this all going, whether everything is uh, pretty much identical. Um, yeah. Yep. Oh. Uh, one more thing to note, uh, Martin, is yeah. um, you can see it also in the pictures in the wiki, but have you noticed how I uh, attach the the axis to the frame? I actually use the... Um, this was just a mistake, and it, it just happened that it worked, but I use the same bolts that hold the sandwich sandwiches together on the axis to um, go through the frame yeah so I did um, and that was just something that I did because I, I wasn't really looking at, at the details and the isn't that what we recommend to do well I, I think it works pretty well I think it's, it works very well yeah, I mean, oh, it's the I same know, bolt. What you, what you recommend, I think, is using the... Um, I think you are using the actual... 
those slots inside the where you put the nuts on the sandwiches. Oh, so you did it from the other side, 90 degrees to that. Yeah, so it's perpendicular basically to the direction of the axis. So I, I see. Use, um, well, that could be the it. reason why you have a slightly less space, probably, no? Uh, well, mm, no, because like that only that only gets me uh, four millimeters of the overall length so only four millimeters of the overall length is uh, reduced by doing what I did okay all right um, yeah yeah I mean when we do the I mean we have to settle to one thing uh, why did you choose to do that uh, well it was by accident okay okay <laughs> um, uh, it, it happened that it worked and it saved you it saved you a few nuts um, right and, uh, right it saved you it saved you one two three four five six seven eight twelve bolts uh, which is not something that anyone will complain about but um, it does it does it did come came come up nice uh, it saves bolts because you're using one one hole instead of two holes no, because you are not needing extra bolts to hold the axis. Oh, I see, I see, because you're not using extra bolts. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Uh, maybe we should consider that uh, as the better option. Yeah, we can, we can. Uh, yeah, in our learnings, let's consider that. That's that's actually interesting. I'm, I'm always for using less parts, so that would be uh, desirable on the lower part count, overall part count. Yep. Okay. okay. Great. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on here. That's that's good work. Um, so let's continue right along here. On the, let's look at the next slide there. So this is California California D3D build. So with the PVC pipes, that's the other thing we're exploring as far as an easy way to to get a frame without having to CNC cut metal. And uh, the test is still, this, this hasn't been run yet, but the idea is let's see if we can get that full stability. The only question is, are those corners, is, that, is the structure overall stiff enough to make it work really well? Uh, but other than that, I mean, that looks pretty attractive, and it's all off-the-shelf parts. The corners you can get from Amazon, and that's just standard PVC pipe. Maybe only trickery being drilling right on top of the for the bolt holes, drilling right on top, um, drilling through the top side of a pipe. It's you have to get that aligned there exactly, so you're not not off the top to the side. Because when you start that, it's a little difficult to start a drill bit up in that exact location. But yeah, this is one way to go with you know. Uh, Let's say we're running a workshop somewhere we can pick up the PVC pipes locally because the frame is the really heavy part so if the frame is addressed by this low weight way to do it I think there's definitely merit to this kind of approach um, definitely not as stiff and strong so you can't apply it to things with a lot of force like CNC routers or something or milling machines but for the printer um, let's see how it works in actual testing. So that's that's good work there. Um, okay, moving on. So I have to report on. I've been working on the biodigester, so getting the final plumbing on that. Uh, so you can look at the biodigester V18.01 page on the wiki. Uh, just going through all the conceptual designs before I actually get into the CAD. So the biodigester is important because what we'd like to do for the CD go home is make that a standard option so a house produces electricity it produces its own gas eventually it produces its own hydrogen for storage and for cars so every home is a gas station running off PV off the roof um, going through the numbers the size of the eco home right now if you pl plaster the top with PV you get 50 to 100 miles driving worth distance if you allot 10 kilowatts of the rooftop panel to hydrogen production if you talk about hydrogen compression and storage for cars 
that's the future, I think. Um, though people are crazy about battery-powered cars these days, but I think we should just skip right next to the hydrogen economy. It's kind of what uh, I call for. Being, being that water is a universally accessible um, element on the Earth's crust, so maximum distribution as opposed to more scarce lithium for batteries or things like that. Okay. Um, back to pipes. Just like we can use PVC pipes in the D3D frame, which can of course eventually be 3D printed. Like the, another advantage here is that we can be printing these frames. So you can talk about a higher percentage of, of, of technological recursion where machines make their own parts. That's that's advantage of PVC, whereas metal you need an induction furnace to melt it down. Uh, but on the PVC, um, done some work on this with the uh, rainwater catchment. You can look on the link uh, so these one inch pipes that's already in our we have some of these files and maybe uh, Ruslan can you can you update us on the pipe workbench if you can pipe in on that um, yes what do you mean with update yeah do you have a would you be ready to actually start trying to take the pipe sections that you have and based on um the document like here like you kind of have to study it for the biodigester and i can show you some more pictures but we we basically want to start catting up the the biodigester maybe you can um are are the the elbows t's and pipes i mean how, what is the state of the your your free cad add-on can i use that already to extract all those parts like one inch and two inch the, the biodigester has one inch has two inch and three inch fittings of PVC. Okay, uh, I think uh, the precise measurement of the fittings depend on uh, the uh, manufacturer. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, are, they are not some kind of standards. That's why I have split uh. the library into macros and uh, data. Uh huh. For example. Are you following multiple I, standards, or are you trying to narrow it down to one? Because I think we should probably narrow it down to one, and or well, I don't know, maybe try to nar narrow it down to a pretty common one. I, I think that the very tiny details may not matter. The critical part, of course, is the diameter, like the outer diameters where the jo sockets go over pipes. I mean, that has to be exact, typically. That I mean, that should be the same. Isn't that the same? Well, where you um, say put in a pipe into a fitting, like the the. Yeah, there is. Uh, if I I took some uh, specification files from from a producer of the pipe fittings, and there is no information about uh, uh, inner socket diameter. We I just see. say the size of the pipe, and then I. Uh, use another table with uh, standard pipe sizes and, and derive all the information from there. Okay, okay. So it's still work in progress? Oh, uh, it is in progress, but... Uh, uh, it's how, like, pretty advanced now. Right, I right. Sent, uh, I put a link with my GitHub. Okay. Um, yeah, PVC workbench link, if you can put that there. Yeah. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find it. On. You have some, uh, several screenshots there, if you go to the link. Uh, where is the link? Oh, chat. Okay, I was waiting for, for it in, uh, in a document. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if I, let's see. So which ones can I use already? That's, yeah, that's looking. 
pretty good. Can we get... Yeah. So this, what you're showing, that's already working? Uh, yes, all of them are working. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, uh, you can download uh, from the GitHub uh, the macros themselves. Yeah. And try to start it. And uh, I put also an additional repository with um, with uh, data stored in uh, comma separated values tables, such that uh, uh, you can add other values from other manufacturer, and then when you run a macro, you can see. Uh, you just select a part name, and it will uh, two parameters from the table, take parameters from the table, and create automatically the part. Okay. Uh, elbows. We, we have uh, different elbows, uh, T's, and couplings. Pipes. Okay. Uh, and usage. Function, yeah. Uh huh. Page. Uh, let's see. What is that? P it's PVC pipe and fittings library page. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're basically able to select. You you have a sw you can select one inch or whatever inch. You can select the size, the schedule, and the length. You can do that, for example, for PVC. Um, yes. Uh huh. Well, for the pipe. Yep. And for example, for the elbows, what do you do? You click on the one that you want, like whether it's half inch or one inch, and then click OK, and then it, you get it. Yes, and then I create, create it. There are two possibilities. If you uh, if you check the box create a solid, yeah, you do it, uh, combine to a solid. But if you want, you can keep all the primitive parts, like cylinders. Okay. It, uh, okay. It has sometimes uh, advantage to have uh, uh, the objects to okay. be composed from, from these primitive parts. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. I can't wait to try this out. Um, what's the What's the work that uh, needs to be done on this still? But for, uh, I just found some uh, manufacturer of, uh, of this part and then uh, uh, wrote the da data from the PDF file uh -huh. to the uh, CSV file. Uh, of course, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you will have a different manufacturer with different parameters. Mm -hmm. And you need to update this data. Uh, then uh, you can use uh, specific values. And is uh, that so? Are you creating that within each one of these, like the pipe and elbow, or coupling T's? You're gonna add those data points to each of those mar macros, or are you gonna create like a non-stand? Oh, uh, 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 you don't need to add them to the macros uh, in the macro directory you have files okay with, files uh, comma separated values and then you can change these files you don't need to change the macros okay change the files i mean to so you have selections for different standards or is the the intent that you're you're gonna for some cases want to modify that i mean that gets pretty technical like you really have to know what you're doing on that so do you have both selection and modification allowed? No, it, uh, they're just uh, stored as uh, uh, comma separated values. You can edit them in, uh, for example, okay. LibreOffice. Okay. Just li like an Excel, but much simpler. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll I'll have to take a look at more of that. Um, let's see. Did you. 
Do you have any notes in the, in the, on the wiki regarding those comma separated value uh, fi file modification? Maybe you can. Were you planning on adding that, or maybe add some notes on that? How to work with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely CSV is common, uh, but just get people uh, heads up on what's going on with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I understand that we need to, to make as, as few assumptions about... Uh, yeah, yeah. Assume, a, I mean, the typical assumption is assume a person knows nothing about it. Like, you know, like I would ask, okay, so you got tables of data points. So what, how do you do it? Yeah, just, just make it, explain it all the way. Yeah. Okay, um, that sounds good. Do you want to try to, um, maybe we can communicate, I can, I can point you towards, um, with a biodigester, for example, maybe you can work on like little parts of it, like you can actually start cutting up, like for example, you see on uh, slide number six, that's like a part of a, part of a design, so maybe like I could get you working on actually trying to put together parts of the design, basically modularly breaking down the digester into different parts of it. And uh, how did you create uh, these parts? Well, these parts, I believe I simply took off MacMaster car. This is, uh, I think these are MacMaster car parts where they had, or somewhere I, I pulled off the one inch. These are one inch. Um, and that's in a file. If you go to the, to that wiki page, Rainwater Cistern, you'll see the CAD file. But yeah, those were just imported, I believe, from FreeCAD. So they're probably gonna be heavy. It might be a little more memory than we need. I'm assuming that what you're doing, generating it from scratch, it's pretty lean, like the files are pretty small. Yeah. Yep. Yes, I want uh, to make a special workspace. Yep. Uh, okay. There should be some way to construct all, all, all the things uh, um, in a very simple way. Okay. Like uh, I, I wrote an email like Lego. Right, right. So you uh, want to continue working on a workbench? So work on a workbench, uh, basically PVC workbench. Uh, yes. For example, if, if you. Uh, I like that. Yeah. If you want to, to create a, to create a frame. Yep. Just put the pipe and then rotate it, then point yeah. uh, on the end and say, I want to have a 19 degree fitting there. And then yeah. 19 degree. And then you rotate it. Um, and the system should uh, somehow determine if rotation is around a, a pipe. Okay. And then uh, step by step, there should be a possibility to create a frame. Okay. Okay, I like that, and that's also relevant uh, if we end up uh, finding out that the 3D printer frame is working, that will be relevant for 3D printers too. So the back door to getting the 3D printer workbench, which we somewhat started. <laughs> okay. That's excellent. So you've got your work cut out for you, meaning you know what to do? It is just a year. It could be task. If it's done properly, it, it is easy to use, but that means all the, all the intelligence will be hidden in the code. Right. And so is this a project you'd like to embark on, or is that, or you'd like to work on something else? Um, it, it is a challenging project, I think. I will maybe uh, do some, uh, um, some tries. Okay. In order to estimate how how hard it is. Okay. And, uh, there are some uh, similar projects already. Okay. Uh, uh, someone point it out. Uh, Majid have uh, on Majid side have. Uh, uh, projects for PVC pipe work benches or for other parts. For pipes. Uh,
Okay, well, the even, Flamingo, yeah. The Flamingo, uh -huh. There is also a, a different, uh, another reason why I skip data and uh, the code. Um, I'm not sure about licensing. I just put the uh, free uh, parameters which are available on the internet. Yeah, CC by a... CSV files. Right. Um, um, but I don't know what is the, the license of them. Oh, I see, I see. Considering the code, I, I'm pretty sure what is the license. It's my code. So I yep. will do it uh, as open source as possible. And the okay. data, it, everyone can, can put uh, different um, information from different uh, manufacturers. Okay. Yeah, I see the flamingo. Is the flamingo working already? Um, uh, I, I didn't try it out. Mm -hmm. I think I installed it. Yeah, see what you can find out. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It can be. We can. Okay. And of course, if it, if it will work, it will be nice. Then, uh, then I will make some contribution back to free cut projects. Definitely. Um, it, that would be because thin pipes could be a good way to do wires as well. I mean, as they talk about wires there and that at Flamingo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think. Uh, Many parts of the pipes, uh, they are like topologically equivalent. It doesn't matter how they uh, look. They have some uh, some properties like angle. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they can be round or square. Doesn't matter. At the end, they uh, constrain. Um, for elbow, for example, they constrain the position of, of two pipes in particular angle. Yep. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. So definitely, um, definitely worth looking into and seeing what what we can make really practical for our workflows from all of that. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So we'll continue on that then. So I'll feed you some more notes on the biodigester. You can take a look at what we have there and see if it makes any sense to you. Or the water system also. Because it's, it's based on these one cubic meter plastic totes containers. Um, which, by the way, we would need a file for to begin with. Um, so maybe maybe you can start by finding a file for a tote. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? The one cubic meter plastic containers. No. Okay. Uh, look at the look at the documents that we have. I think that some of that info should be in a water um, in a water document, rainwater cisterns document on that wiki page, and there might be some information on on the biodigester page. So, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, sounds good. So let's move on here. Uh, let's go to Roberto. Um, can you update us on your progress? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Well, I worked on the Prusa i3 MK, MK3, I think. It's true there. Yeah. Yep. And well, I I use the the, the STL um, files that are 
um, in the Prusa website. And I just um, added the, 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 the motor and the fans and the um, hot end yeah. and the proximity sensor. Did you use the a CAD file that was available from Prusa? Or you drew this up from scratch? Yeah. No, no, I, I used I I think well if we want to uh, well I I think the in the, the next uh, work is to maybe to modify the the back side of the extruder in order to to add the holes for the magnets because now I, I just uh, I just put a um, six I millimeter see. plate I see uh, for the for the magnet for the magnets yeah and that plate is supposed to be bolted to the to the extruder uh -huh. in three three points and it's, it's um, the same uh, positions for the bolts that uh, they use for attaching the extruder to the Rusa X carriage. Uh -huh. So, well, <laughs> there's no modifications basically in the extruder, just changing the or adding an, an interface for the magnets. Okay. Um, and that way everything is accessible, this thing is buildable, and everything else. No, no conflicts? Yeah, yeah. The, I, I, don't think, I don't think so. The extruder design incorporates some, some little places, holes for the, for the wires, the motor wires and the, the fan wires, but as we we use a different uh, way uh, to to manage the wires. I mean, with the with that chain. So I think we are not needing to the that, those holes. But well, I, I think that can be considered in the future design. Okay. Huh. So basically, we can do this pretty much exactly as is. This is the MK3 i3 version. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, well, I I don't I didn't include the most of the little of the shelf part parts like the uh, pulley and the 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 filament sensor. Okay. So, but the, the, if you have the the measures, I can I can add it, I I can add those parts. So, well, I I just um, just consider the, the 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 main components of the extruder. Right. Can you um, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, let's see. Can you find those? Yeah, we do want to put those details in. That would be good. So they just don't have them in the CAD. Is it what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. There's there are bolts, little nuts, the, uh, the some little pulleys for the, the the filament for for the mm -hmm. the motor. But well, yeah, yeah. I, I, th there's a, a very detailed uh, assembly instruction in the Brusa website for assembling this this extruder and on the whole printer. Yeah. So I, I I just follow the, those instructions and and I, I could assemble the what what you're seeing. Okay. So that would be good. Uh, let's see, let's get a link to the assembly instructional. 
in this document. Yeah, that would be good. Um, let's see. Um, we want to put those other parts in. Yeah, can you can you pick those out from the, the instructional and see if you can identify them and put as much detail as possible? Yeah, yeah. What, what I I haven't seen is a, a detailed list, part list list to to purchase or. Oh yeah. Um, uh huh. I I think they they expect to sell those parts, but as a kit, I I I remember. And also with the with the with the assembly printer and um, yeah but I, I I didn't see the the detailed list part list for the, the extruder so I, I just can see the, the images some uh, descriptions right of the parts so they do not provide a BOM for this the this i3 I'm sorry, I, I, MK. I, I'm not completely sure about it, but I, it's not. Uh, it's not visible. But at least I, what I what I saw, I, I didn't, I didn't so I didn't see that. I see. Okay, can you email them for the BOM? Typically, they're very responsive. Email them about this. See if that if they're releasing that. Because if it's not, I mean that's not, um, that's not open source, and they pride themselves on being open source, so they should have that. Okay. Email them. Uh, ask for the BOM for detailed BOM. Because that, I mean, that would be definitely kind of against their culture if they're if they're selling the kits and not releasing the BOM. Because that's not really open source. Because open source means you need you have all the documents necessary to build something. BOMs and CAD are perhaps the two most critical aspects of that. Mm -hmm. BOM CAD and build instructions. So they got build instructions, they got most of the CAD. It doesn't appear like BOM. So yeah. Uh, and it could be that they just didn't get around to it or or they're not or they're actually hiding it. So um, let's find out what that is. But that's pretty good because now uh, so I noticed that the files are STLs uh, Sorry, not STLs, but yeah, I mean, what you imported are mesh files, and yeah. those export, we can ex get those individual parts and export them properly, correct? That's not an issue, right? Right, the, 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 those parts are not modificated, so you mm -hmm. can download it from the, download from the, from the Prusa website and just print them. Okay. Right. And, and mm -hmm. about that, I have a question yep. because, well, what is the, um, the what do do we expect about these extruders? Just um, and keeping the the same design, or or are we going to to make it simpler? Uh, I don't know. No, I, th I don't know. I mean, um, because these parts are getting 3D printed, there's, uh, there's not a compelling reason to make them simpler if this really works well already, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, the only thing I would change, if anything, we did discuss a little bit about not using the 4mm probe, but an 8mm probe. Uh, because of the some of the issues of how, how close you have to get, yeah, just with the aluminum bed and the PEI surface being so thick, it's very very close to the to the print air, to the prints that you're making. So let's see um, how easy is it to modify that holder? Let me just uh, extruder body. Uh, do we have enough meat around there to accept a wider? A slightly bigger probe. It, it's yeah. We need we need uh, eight millimeters and uh, more. Uh huh. I think because the the the, 
larger sensor has um, 18 millimeters in di diameter. Uh huh. Uh, is that that wouldn't fit in the current design then? Would that fit in there? Do we have eight more millimeters there or no? Can we expand that hole like? Check. Because right now that the diameter of that is what twelve millimeter. Probably like twelve, and we need like. Um, let's see. It's ten. Ten. Oh, oh no! It's. No Point. no no! Right now is eight. Yeah, uh -huh. because they they use a different sensor. Uh, B I N T. A sensor. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's just eight millimeters, so we need ten more, and I think we mm. haven't ten extra. We have not that much. Let's see. Can you but modify that maybe a little bit, or? Yeah, I, I think it's, we can design. A Don't be too hard. We can. No. Yeah. What they I, have yeah. there is a nut catcher and a bolt, right? So they they clamp that together. And I noticed that there's like, can you see my screen? That piece of meat yeah. there. So when they clamp down on the bolt, that thing gets like bent out, or is that supposed to not be there? Mm, that's a good point. Maybe yeah, that's maybe not supposed to be there. Plates are. Are designed to be broken. Yeah, maybe. And that's just for printing. Maybe, yeah, could be. maybe just to keep the part together, so you don't lose the small attachment at the front. Well, it's it's connected at the back, though. So, yeah, I don't uh, understand that part there. It, they, it looks like a sacrificial part or something you break off or. Or maybe because, they're so tight yeah, yeah, that spring mechanism. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So yeah, I guess maybe keep that. So 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 can you basically take this part and fatten it out a little bit? Because I think other than that, we should be all good. Just make it go out to the side a little more, and we should be fine. Yeah. Yep. And about the. The, the interface for the magnets yeah. is acceptable. Yeah, I think I think that's good. Uh, I mean, if they already have those, wait, let's see. So those, let me see. So we ha we already, let's see, in our interface, did you you added those holes, the little holes, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, three three holes, and uh -huh. also sacrificing the, the top magnets, one of the top magnets. Right, which is okay. That's fine. Um, which means that the extruder, the mount on the the printer itself, will still have the magnet, but this one won't. I don't know. That's a, that sounds pretty good to me. Because otherwise, if you don't do this. Yeah, I have to just put a bunch of holes in here, which this thing is currently not really set up for that, right? I mean, we could... Right, because that one, it's got that hole there. We could literally just do... Yeah. Unless we go all out to modify this. Yeah, maybe just do the, the interface like you have. That sounds... Sounds pretty good, because um, otherwise it's just really hard to fit the pattern that we have already onto this extruder. Can I um, can I ask something here? Yeah, yeah. Um, it just have you seen those extruders that are separated? Um, they have the hot section, sort of like the the nozzle with the hot section and the fan attached to the the axis and then the motor with the uh, traction part is attached somewhere else in the frame 
Yeah. Hey, have you seen? You mean the Wade style extruder with a big wheel? No, no, no. It's uh, that? I show you because I have it here for that printer I have been using to print the parts. And what you have is basically that. That is all. Oh, that you're talking about. You're talking about. Yeah, the what's it called? The Bowden extruder. Bowden. Yeah, it's not good for rubber. We want rubber. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, but that's. Don't mind me asking. Then. No, that's all right. Um, yeah. What we want to, what we're doing here is going to the Prusa because we just want a better extruder that we're in control of. Because the one we have right now, I mean, they they come in all kinds of different, slight differences in them when you get them off the shelf. So here, all we need to do is basically get the hardware, which is going to be the same, and then the motor, and then everything else is printed so that our our extruders are going to be exact. No. No, mod no no variations, so that's important. But still, this is a 1.75 millimeter extruder, which that's for smaller printing, but for larger printing, we want to go to three millimeter with bigger spools and the uh, volcano nozzle and stuff like that, which we'll do another one. But this is just kind of like the small entry level that's really good uh, and already there. We, we basically have the design, so uh, it's a quick way to, to implement this and, and be successful on the, the immediate need for an extruder. But we do want to go to a larger one, um, one that's got the volcano nozzle and, and yeah, this is going to be faster for the bigger machines. Well, 1.2 millimeter nozzle. Yep. Okay, so I think the answer to the question on the, this mount here is, I think that's pretty good. Otherwise, we would have to modify this thing thoroughly which it's not really worth it then um, and then if we do it exactly as they are then when they're making upgrades their upgrades are pro probably gonna fit to to our upgrades so we basically hired them for free <laughs> in open source uh, so I, I like the interface plate uh, it's an extra part but from the the perspective of of modular design that is part of a, a good design design pattern the idea of uh, they call it wrappers in software but an agile scrum for hardware like Joe Justice talks about uh, look at the wiki actually I did a article I think I linked to scrum for hardware but that is the pattern interfaces are a good design pattern let's do it outside of the one extra part count hey we'll, we'll take that for the flexibility uh, and it's 3D printed anyway. And mind you, the people, this is going to be, the only challenge about it is that, but you can't avoid it with magnets. The magnets are tricky because they're so strong, they really like to jump out. It's hard to glue them on, but we'll just have to do that um, um, in this and go forward. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, thank you for doing that. That's, let's move right on and do the interface plate. Uh, see if we can do the larger larger probe and other than that everything else if we can fill in those missing details uh, after finding out from Prusa and crew if they have the BOM available all right yeah right excellent okay good work good work uh, let's move on to Abe 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 are you in the meeting Abe, can you hear us? Abe definitely appears to be there, but... Um... Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, so, good. fill us in. Um, yeah, so we're going to run the power cube, fill yep. in some details, uh, mostly just grades and things. Um, I think, let's see, I think we talked about before, there's probably uh, some things I need measurements on to fix on some of those details. And... Uh, generally, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I couldn't find, one thing I couldn't find, just a minor thing was those feet. We went back through a bunch of bombs, but I suppose those feet could be back in, 
any bomb on past power cubes, but um, oh. just to verify that size. And then I'm going to move on to the, uh, I'm starting to think about the plumbing now, cloud coating that, so I'm going to review back how all the, make sure I know what order the plumbing is in, because, and I think that, let's see, I need to do probably some work on the hydraulic fittings library and get as much as possible in there. I started to clean that up before, so I think it's ready for more more parts that should make doing all this plumbing stuff easier in general, because there might be some changes there. <clears throat> okay. Especially for the, uh, between the auxiliary and the main cube, right? Okay, but uh, then we say we we're going to do the uh, the cooler right in front of the air intake there? On the front of the engine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought I moved it let's see to the other side. Maybe I didn't show what you meant. Um isn't that let's see. Yeah. Maybe no, I, I thought missed, I thought exactly we were talking missed. last time about uh, the majority of the airflow happens directly like the air gets sucked into that front plane of the of the hexagonal part there so we want to move it just right there so so move that 90 degrees there okay so on the front of the engine yeah, yeah. i should have listened back to the meeting better last time um yeah yeah okay so you i think we talked about it because of the power cord but yeah i think i remember you suggested the power cord it'll come out the side yeah actually that, that's that another thing right oh oh cool yeah pull cord also comes yeah. out the side mm-hmm Okay, so, yeah, great on the front then. Okay, that makes it simpler because that'll make everything, well, smaller. Yeah, okay, I'll double-check the fit. Um, yeah. The cooler should fit. Uh, yeah, yeah it should, should fit in there. Back. Okay. <clears throat> that, that's easy to adjust on those. Um, let's see, I think all the other parts are good. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, and I've got, I've got to start putting bolt holes in a bunch of these... Uh, the frame parts to, to bolt all this stuff together, the grades and, and the cooler and all that. So, um, yeah, I, let's see, I think uh, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out where to put the holes in those parts, but they're all editable. Um, <clears throat> the front, that might be easier, actually. And, let's see, then, then it's, see, after that, I think most of the details are going to be most of the work will be on the plumbing, which, if we don't draw a bunch of pipes and things, I mean, there's going to be a number of fittings. I know there's always a few you have to adapt between different parts. It's never a simple, kind of like it is there on the cooler now. There's multiple parts to adapt to the pipe, so. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe what we can do is uh, if you move the, as soon as you move the cooler over to the front, um, let me know and then we can I can kind of email you and maybe draw out some sketches of, of what what good route hose routing strategies would be based on our former experience so maybe get that done and then we can talk okay. about hose hoses maybe yeah maybe take some of these and it might be visually helpful to put them on the uh, kind of look at the tractor again and yep see how that's all gonna connect. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the, close enough. I can simplify some of these cubes and maybe stick them on the yeah. large tractor. So. Okay, that would be good. Estimate where the hoses go because it's a lot of hose routing, all right. So uh, with four, yeah. four cubes. Yeah, no, that would be, so. that's good. We can actually look how that will look for real. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's see. Well, okay, so the grate will be in the front. That, that's probably better because then it won't be blocking the side. We can get hoses out the sides uh, mm -hmm. between the cubes. That'll that'll work better there too. So, um, yeah, okay. And more details on the bolts and fittings then, and. 
I have to put uh, a bunch of stuff in the fittings library. Yep. Uh, if it's if there's some things there, but more work on that. So so I found that uh, interesting with the pipe library. I wonder how that's going to eventually that can be used for uh, other other plumbing types here. So definitely. I wonder how adjust that is. <laughs> yeah. No. I'll probably have to. Yeah, might have to do some modifications on that, but that's definitely once once we see the pattern for the plumbing for the PVC, then we can get the corresponding one for for metal metal fittings. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I think that's that's it. Just uh, little details. Um, sometimes the CAD. Well, you're slow on some of that, but um, I'm mostly having pretty good success assembling the parts the way I've been doing. So um, <clears throat> I, I think the details will come together. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Week. Yeah, and then we can put a bunch of these together for 64 or 80 horsepower. So yeah, well that sounds good. So let's see. That's I think that's about all we've got for today. So. Uh, everyone good? Any? Let's see. Any questions? Any more questions and comments? Otherwise, we we adjourn for next week, same time and same same channel, 2 p.m. Tuesday. Just Anything a, else? Just a quick um, thing on the D3C. Yeah. D3C. Um, I added uh, on the Z axis, um, like uh, ideally, it would be it would be needed. What it would be needed is a, a small spring. Uh -huh. that you can sort of screw around one of the rods so for when that z-axis does that first dip before a homing um, I, put, I put underneath the carriage uh, a bit of foam uh -huh. at the moment no, I see what you're um, saying yeah. yeah that's all oh, okay no that's a that's a good point because there is a dip down and that's that's in a code like we could also fix that in a code but yeah that that would be a good solution for now just a little little thing so it doesn't go down all the way so yeah make a note of that in your log if you haven't already yeah okay sounds good to me anything else not at the moment anyone else yep Ruslan, okay. You asked about the uh, regard to G. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we can use it uh, to construct fittings. I, I wrote a reply. And uh, I, I have uh, had experience with 3D printing now with this uh, software, regard 3D, but I thought if it's possible to use. Uh, we got 3D as a, um, optical control, quality control of yeah. 3D printed parts. It's pretty advanced. It possibly can be. I think it's a little more advanced feature of that. But yeah, we ran into this Regard 3D photogrammetry where you take a bunch of pictures to do a 3D scan. So we're kind of evaluating to see if that could be use usable for getting 3D scans, um, it may be, maybe not. It's not that easy to do, but um, if people want to look at regard3d.org, I put a com put a link there in the notes. Um, should definitely explore whether what the limits of that are, whether we can get useful 3D scans out of that, because the 3D scanning is part of the Global Village construction set. Okay. Processes, uh, I suppose, is pretty slow. Yeah, it is. And then you, uh, you need to stay close to the printer to observe all the time if the output is as uh, as good as you would want to have, that you really uh, get the part you want to get, or not. Oh no! I mean, people don't watch it. I mean, if if you're operating it, yeah, you check in on it after all the time but I mean at night I mean you don't wake up and check up on your prints uh, but what you're saying is is good 
the idea that you actually have visual recognition whether the thing is actually working uh, I don't know if anyone has done that probably but but yeah that's that would mean um, more advanced much more advanced code I haven't heard of people doing that within Marlin at least but it's definitely something valuable for the future like when we get really good at this so the the printer would recognize itself whether a print failed or not I mean that's definitely a valuable feature and um, how uh, how you control the quality of um, or the, the dimension of the printed part uh, the, uh, the plastic which printer use is a soft material and uh, I think uh, the parts which are printed are not really precise, or am I wrong? Well, I mean, the nozzle is very fine, so you get, I mean, people claim like like 300 micron accuracy or something like that, oh. fraction of a millimeter. It's it's still quite precise because the, the filament that comes out is, nozzles are pretty small, like they have nozzles that are 100 microns or like 200 microns. Uh, so you just let out a very small piece of filament, but the, that's that's part of the problem because it's so tiny It takes so long to print. That's why we want to go to bigger print heads like 1.2 millimeter, which is not going to be as precise But for large objects that doesn't matter Okay, but maybe you can use an additional optical control for, for, for deviation. Well, absolutely. Or yeah Yeah, 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 I mean feedback for all kinds of things like from as simple as the filament ran out to actually looking at the 3D image of what you're printing and and possibly adjusting parameters for printing from that. Yeah. And can you control the uh, thickness of uh, of the plastic which um, ca uh, which comes out of, of the nozzle? To a limited extent. I mean, I don't know if uh, what we do is we don't do that. But if you go slower and push harder on the filament, more of it is going to come out, so you can get like slight thickness variation. But um, yeah, there's a whole whole science to that besides uh, kind of more extensive than what we can cover right now. Yeah, it's not it's not uh, it's not trivial. But what you do is basically you you let it come out at a thick, kind of like somewhat of a fixed rate and things like that. But there is all kinds of tricks you can play, like like you, you do withdrawing the filament and then pushing it back out. There's some control, but uh, complex topic. Okay. I just uh, thought about possibility of way where we can use uh, some optical feedback and if, uh, if uh, the machine will, will realize that some, some lines are too thin or there is a uh, yeah. hue then uh, maybe it can adjust the next level in such a way that it will reduce. Yeah, uh, I think that's... Uh, yeah, definitely valuable, but that's you're talking about a computer vision pro pro problem added on top of 3D printing, so it's not really... That's ad some advanced stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, maybe if you... Uh, one of the reasons think about it, it uh, um, maybe feedback will um, re uh, wait, uh, I need to this may be possible with the help of the feedback uh, use uh, less precise uh, printing parts. Uh, now that part actually um, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing, but there's already one thing that they have, there's already filament width sensing, so on the other side, say, say you produce your own filament and the filament is not uniform. There's already existing capacity within Marlin that allows you to print faster or slower, meaning it, it adjusts for, because the, the filament is not uniform, so that's one, one thing that already does exist. And we actually do want to implement that uh, because once we start making our own filament, then you don't really care how good your filament is and still you get excellent prints. So that's that's something we do want to implement. 
not too distant future. Once once we start making our own filament, which is probably a few months from now. Could, could be an interesting engineering or mathematical problem from control point of view. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, maybe maybe we could refine some of that. The, the guy that's working on that is with the, the Thunderhead filament extruder guy. Uh, he's he's got a filament sensor in his system, and yeah, we were talking about some issues that yeah, there might be some good refinements, and maybe we could use your help on. It'll be good. Mm -hmm. uh, another question: You you talk about uh, uh, printing of uh, fittings from uh, printing of pipe fittings using 3D printer, and uh, yeah, we talk uh, about it already. You said that it. It is possible, but um, the pressure, uh, no, not for high pressure. For low pressure, it's fine. And we've done that already. Okay. Um, two questions. Uh, is it easier to replace a fitting just uh, through a block of plastic with, uh, let's say, two holes for a T? Uh-huh. Or also for two holes for an elbow, just plastic and two holes with, uh, at the particular angle. Yes, you can certainly do that, but you'll see that you'll have square fittings and you have material waste and it takes your time if you're doing it by hand. If you're 3D printing, it's all automatic and you can be efficient on, re on material use. But that's, that's uh, definitely something worthwhile. I mean, I've thought about that definitely for valve hydraulic high pressure valves where those valves are very expensive and they are essentially blocks with holes drilled in them with different circuits so that's that's where that's more relevant i would say and it's, it's also possible to put some kind of uh, wires or um, fibers into uh, print with uh, plastic and fibers uh, fiber reinforced plastic. Look up Joshua, Dr. Joshua Pierce's paper on plastic metal filament composites. Yes, that's a that's a great thing. I think that we can possibly use that. There's open source work happening on that already. From I don't know if you've heard of Joshua Pierce. He's the guy that wrote the book called Open Source Lab. Uh, he's doing some of that research at Michigan Tech University. He did the fiber reinforced printer that's with metal fibers. That's definitely worthwhile. Think about printing your own rubber radial reinforced metal reinforced tires. So I think that's rel quite relevant. It's not not super difficult. I mean you you can have another ha even like a thin metal fiber that's going into the plastic at the same time or something like that it's it's definitely an, another challenge but definitely something that's doable and, and, uh, and a good idea strength, strength, um, make the, uh, the fitting stronger which you previously printed with uh, 3d printing and then um, right, uh, rope around uh, nylon for example yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's that's how they do things like um, what make what that makes me think of. If you put fiberglass around a form, that's it's kind of the composites are a very good idea. Um, and then the, the small fibers within the molten filament too, like carbon fiber within the molten filament, that can be printed as well. So, and and there's challenges and opportunities there. Um, but yeah, there's. I mean, that's why that's why a lot of people are super excited about 3D printing because when you start thinking about it, you know, from metal printing to other applications, I mean, the, there are a lot of different possibilities that become real that previously weren't in terms of I, I just, uh, home scale manufacturing. Sorry, yep. I saw some YouTube video about making uh, tanks, uh, fuel tanks for rockets, and they uh, have some kind of form. And then put uh, carbon fibers in particular pattern uh -huh. around it, and then uh, uh, how I made uh, with some kind of plastic. Uh, the standard way to do that is yes, you do the carbon fiber, and then you you pour 
a an epoxy resin or something around that yes, that uh, solidifies. Epoxy. Yeah, I mean that's standard that's standard procedure and very interesting. I I've been thinking about that a bit because um, I've been thinking about hydrogen as I'm thinking about the book and writing the book. But making lightweight composite tanks for hydrogen, I mean, imagine you can 3D print that eventually. Uh, that would be a game changer in some way, as in you can you can have high you know high pressure storage 3D printed. You know, stuff like that. It, it is, it is um, like you're saying, there's a lot of possibilities there. And that's, I mean, that you can do in your, your garage. If you do, you have a form and you do the epoxy, epoxy tanks, I mean, that's maybe not high pressure at this point, but, but at least for very strong structures, just like we, when we built, uh, we did a little bit of prototyping on an open source car. We, we, uh, we did a carbon fiber wheel. You can look that up on, uh, if you Google that somewhere, you'll find some of our work. We did the carbon fiber wheel for the open source car. Uh, we had a little prototype, which, which we built around a form. And then we used the, the carbon fiber mat and then epoxy on that. And that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, I got to get going, though. So... Um, uh, good questions. Definitely 3D printing is exciting on many fronts, but I uh, need to get going. So so everybody, um, yeah, if we can reconvene next time then at 2 p.m., same time next week. Uh, so thanks a lot, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye. And I'll post this Bye. meeting as soon as we're... Um,